found an old jar of pickled ginger in the back. It's actually expired, but let's pretend it's not. And let's pretend I lost the lid. And let's pretend I can't find a Tupperware box to put this in. But I want to store it. What do I do? I just take a balloon, blow it up, then press it on top, apply pressure, and let go of the air. And bam, sealed. Done. This here is a vacuum sealing bag and a vacuum sealer. Basically, it's a machine that removes air from a plastic bag so you can store food for a long enough time or sous vide it. Now, here I'm just gonna show you how it works. You just put it in and it will remove the air from the bag and seal it. Now, usually you use this with meats or other products that need to be away from oxygen, but here I'm gonna show you with fruit because frankly, it looks very good on video. So as you can see, it's removed all the air out and now it seals it. Now, these are great devices, but I understand that not most of you will have these things at home since it's kind of a specialty thing. But as you can see, it's removed most of the air from this package and the fruit would stay good for quite a while. Now, here's a way you can do it at home without the sous vide machine. You just take a Ziploc bag and put your camera friendly fruit inside. Then you place it underneath a water bath. And as you push it down, the water will displace the air out. Just make sure to seal it with the seal still above the water level. And this works reasonably well. It removes most of the air out. I'd say 95, 96% of the air, but there's a better method. And this here is a better method. Now, as you can see, if I seal the bag normally, there's a lot of air in this. But if I open it up and just stick a straw in there and make sure you stick the straw all the way down to the food source, so it's close to that, and then you seal the bag from the opposite side of the straw until you get as tight as possible close to that straw. And then you just want to suck the air out with your mouth as much as you can. So just suck really hard and take it all out. Okay, and once you've got all the air out, then you want to move the straw out while still sucking and just seal it with your finger like that. And there you go. This is taking, I'd say 98, 99% of the air out and it's pretty good, like the fruit doesn't move about, you can't move it around. It's not as good as the professionally sealed one, but it's really good for just a straw and Ziploc bag. It's a great option for those of you who don't have a sous vide machine at home. All right, so once you finish your Nutella pot, there's always so much Nutella stuck on the walls of it. It's so annoying to scrape off and very difficult. There must be an easy way to clean it. Well, there is. Just pour a little bit of warm milk in there till you fill it up about halfway. Then you just want to put the lid back on and seal it on nice and tightly. And after that, just shake like crazy. Just keep shaking and shaking and shaking. And after you've shaken some, just shake some more. And once you're done, you'll see the chocolate paste start to release itself from the glass jar, just like that. I'm just gonna shake it a little bit more. And once you feel it's clean enough, then you can just open it up. And as you can see, there's no more Nutella on the inside of the glass. Now I suggest you take a glass and just pour it out. Pour out that delicious Nutella infused milk or Nutella milkshake. And you can enjoy it just like this. But my recommendation is you just add a little bit of whipped cream on top like this. Maybe a little bit of chocolate sauce. Throw some sprinkles on there and enjoy. Add some straws. Great. Delicious. Cutting cherry tomatoes can be a little bit annoying. Cutting them one by one can just be a long and agonizing task and especially if you need a lot of them. So there is a better way and I'm sure a lot of you have seen similar tricks like this on the internet before. You just place a bunch of cherry tomatoes on a plate and then you place a plate on top and then you take a long sharp knife and just slide it in between the two plates and cut through all the cherry tomatoes in one go. This is great, although it does dirty two plates in one go and a knife. So that could be a little bit annoying, but it does a great job at cutting cherry tomatoes really quickly. Now, another way, if you're up for it, is you take your cherry tomatoes, just place them on a cutting board and group them together. Then place your hand over it and slide the knife horizontally across, making sure not to contact your hands. And there we go. A simple, quick way to slice your cherry tomatoes, if you're confident enough. Mm -hmm. 
imagine you just cooked a big pot of sauce and it's full of sauce and you want to transport it. But this lid can just fly off and the sauce can go everywhere. And you don't want to dirty another Tupperware box. Just take two elastic bands and place them from handle to the middle handle with a crossover like this. And then place one more elastic band going from handle to handle. And then this lid is securely fastened. It is not coming off. You can take this and transport this wherever you want and feel safe and secure. You're welcome. On a hot summer day, I love having a little iced coffee. This is where you have some ice cubes and you pour some hot coffee over it. And it just makes a delicious cold coffee drink. The only problem is the ice cubes melt and it dilutes the coffee flavor. The solution to this is you take some coffee and just place it into some ice cube molds just like this and once it's full you guessed it just place it into the freezer and let it freeze until it's nice and rock solid. Once they're done just pop them out and you can keep these inside a ziploc bag in the freezer for whenever you need a little iced coffee cube. Now take your iced coffee cubes place them in a glass and add your hot coffee on top and now you've got a full flavored nice iced coffee for the summer that does not become watery or diluted down. Great. Now you can also take the iced coffee cubes and cover them with milk and then you've got a delicious milk iced coffee for the summer. Now if you don't like coffee you can do the same with milk chocolate and make milk chocolate ice cubes and add milk to it. Great. Alright so you've just cooked some popcorn and when you open the bag you can eat it straight out of the bag like this. But the only problem is when you stick your hand in, you touch the walls of the bag and you get grease on your hands and it's just dirty. Now, the solution to this is you can just put your popcorn in a bowl and then you can eat from the bowl. It seems pretty simple. That's great. You just eat out of it. But then you're dirtying a bowl and then you have to clean the bowl later and you're just making a mess. There must be a better way. And there is. Once you've cooked your popcorn bag, just take a knife and cut three cuts. One here. One right here. And the last one this way, just to make a flap that you can fold over. Once you've done the cuts, just pull it over and flap it over like this. And there you go, you've got a bowl made out of the popcorn bag itself, which you can just eat straight out of. Now, this is way better because once you're done, you won't have to clean it, you just throw the bag away. All right, so you've just finished eating some chips and you're full, you don't want any more. Happens to all of us. Now to store it, what to do? You can't seem to find your clamp, or your other clamp, or this firing clamp. Well, there's a simple way, just flatten it, and make sure there's no air there, then fold it over two to three times like this, then turn it around and bring the corners into the center, just like so, then turn it around one more time, and you take this little flap and turn it over itself, just like this, and there we go. You've basically done some origami folding with a chip bag, and it's sealed. The chips can't go out and you didn't need a clamp of any kind. Success! So you want to eat some chips. Don't open the bag. No, no, no. And don't dirty a bowl with the chips. Instead, just take a knife and pinch the middle of the pack like this and do a small little cut. Then you just want to take your fingers and just unravel it in a circular motion, just going round and round until you have a big enough opening that suits your needs. So just keep going round and round, and look at that, look at that massive opening. And there we go, you've basically just made a chip bowl out of your chip bag, and you can easily just eat these in a party without having to dirty any more bowls. You're welcome. I know this looks like cocoa ad, but I assure you it's not. I just really love frozen raspberries with coke, especially in the summer. It just adds such a nice flavor. It's way better than just normal ice cubes. The only problem though is it does fizz up your coke a lot, and at the end you're left with a little bit of a goopy mess of raspberries that are melted. There must be a better way to do this. And there is. Just place some fresh raspberries into your juicing machine. I prefer to use one of these cold pressed juices for raspberries because it extracts way more juice than the centrifugal ones. Um, but yeah, that's up to you. Look at that thing go. I love this part. This is the best. Okay, once you've got enough raspberry juice, and you're gonna need quite a lot of it, then you wanna place it into your ice cube molds just like this. 
And once they're full, just put them in the freezer for about two hours so they can freeze rock solid. And once you're done, you can have a cube like this. And as it melts with the Coke, it'll release flavor into the Coca-Cola. And it's so much better than Cherry Coke, it's unbelievable. And I urge you to give it a try with different flavor combinations. This here is just some orange juice and kale ale, but give it a try with your favorite fruit. Just freeze it into ice cubes and add it to your favorite beverage and magical things will happen. Enjoy. Thank you.